Today's homework is on integers, and we are reviewing integers from, I don't know, a couple months ago. We went through um, a whole lesson on di different types of integers, so that's what we're dealing with today. So let's look at number one. We are adding positive and negative numbers. Number one has a positive eight plus a negative six. So essentially we have eight positives and six negatives. So the signs are different. We're gonna take the difference. So eight minus six gives me two. And I have more positives than I have negatives, so it's gonna stay a positive two. And so that's my answer there, okay? If you want to do it with counters, you could um, go ahead and write how many positives you have. So I would have eight positives. And I would have six negatives, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I can pair them up. And then I wanna see how many I have left over at the end. So I have two positives left, which is checking my work, how I got my positive two right here. On number three, we have six minus eight. Remember that minus signs are the same thing as negative signs. So we can rewrite this as six. Anytime you see a subtraction sign, we're gonna add the opposite. So this really becomes six plus a negative eight. Now it's similar to the problem we did in number one. We have six positives and we have eight negatives. So signs are different, take the difference. So eight minus six is two. But this time we have more negatives than we do positive. So this is going to be a negative two for your answer. When you get to number five, six, seven, and eight, and all of those, you're gonna be subtracting or adding multiple um, integers. So the first thing I like to do is go through and add the opposite of any subtraction problem. So we have negative three minus negative seven minus negative three. So first, I'm just gonna look at these first two integers first. So I have negative three minus a negative seven, and I'm gonna add the opposite. So I end up with negative three plus a positive seven. So now the signs are different. I'm gonna take the difference. So seven minus three gives me four. And I have more positives than I do negative, so it's gonna stay a positive four. Then I'm gonna rewrite everything else beyond that problem. So I'm gonna bring down the minus negative three. Now I can do the same thing. When I see subtraction, I'm gonna add the opposite. So when I add the opposite, I get four plus a positive three. Signs are the same, so I'm going to add them, and it's 7, and since they're both a positive, it is a positive 7 for my answer. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and look at number 9. So we switch from addition and subtraction to multiplication, and then we go to division. So on number 9, remember when we're multiplying, we have different rules. When we multiply, if we have 2 we multiply, we have two negatives that we're multiplying together, it's gonna to be a positive. If we have a positive times a negative, the answer is negative. If you have a negative times a positive, it's gonna be negative. And then if you have two negatives multiplied together, it's a positive. So those are the rules that you need for multiplication. And division, this works for both multiplication and division. So let's write that. All right, so multiplication and division. So on number nine, we have four times a negative seven. So four times seven gives me 28. Let me change color so you can see it a little bit better. So we have 28, four times seven is 28. I have a positive times a negative, so my answer has to be negative. So my answer is negative 28. Let's look at number 11 negative eight times negative nine. So we're gonna multiply the numbers. Eight times nine gives me 72. I have a negative times a negative 
is always going to be a positive. So this is a positive 72. So that's my final answer. Now when you have three numbers that you're multiplying, you're going to multiply them as you go. And then if you have an odd number of negatives, your answer is going to be negative. If you have an even amount, they all have a pair, and it's going to be positive. So starting out with negative 3 times negative 1, 3 times 1 is 3, and a negative times a negative is a positive, so it stays a positive 3. And then we're going to bring down our other number, so times negative 6. So 3 times 6 is 18. I have one negative, so it's a negative 18. And I can double check. I had three negatives to start with, and that's an odd number. So that means my answer had to be negative. Now you're going to do your division the exact same way using that chart. So number 17, we have 2 divided by negative 1. Well, 2 divided by 1 is just 2. But I only have one negative sign, so it's going to be a negative 2 for my answer.